Chiari malformation is a rare but serious brain disorder affecting about 300,000 people nationwide. Impacting people of all ages with symptoms showing as early as birth, it affects every person differently, making it very hard to diagnose and very hard to treat. Danica has more. You've likely never heard of it, and you can't tell that someone has it just by looking at them. Chiari malformation is a disorder of the brain that results in compression of parts of the brain and spinal cord, impacting all kinds of daily activities. It's a neurological disorder where your brain stem starts to go back down into your spinal area. It can cause a lot of different side effects like headaches and dizziness, balance issues, and so much more. Natividad's sister, who lives in Las Vegas, was diagnosed with Chiari in 2007 when she was in her 30s. She's been a chronic headache holder. Most of the time you're diagnosed as being migraines, um, anxiety, depression. So you're misdiagnosed and nothing warrants a brain surgery, or excuse me, a brain scan. And I had my brain scan in February 2007 for something totally different. So she thought, hey, maybe I'll go in and do it. And that's how they found it. Carter Maskery's parents knew that something was wrong when he was born, but it took nearly a year, multiple surgeries, and countless doctor's visits for them to receive a diagnosis. Well, when Carter was born, we knew something was wrong right away. He was born and had problems breathing in the hospital and um, come to find out he had aspirated in um, fluid when he was, when he was um, being born and got pneumonia right away. Uh, was in the hospital a little longer than expected. And ever, every time after that, he just always had problems with breathing. He was getting croup and pneumonia all the time. He was choking and coughing all the time. We just knew something was wrong. Um, and so we started taking him to his regular doctor who had us go to ENT specialist who did um, surgery and went down in his throat to look and see what was wrong. And they found some narrowings and then they called it a floppy epiglottis. Um, so they cut that away to try to help his breathing and his reoccurrent croup that he was getting all the time. And uh, nothing helped. But the answers didn't come quickly or easily. He kept going to that ENT and, and nothing was working. The surgeries that he had, he had a couple more and just nothing was working. So he switched to Mayo, went to a lung doctor thinking that that was the next step because of his breathing issues. Um, and so at 11... 10, 11 months old, we went down there, and he immediately thought Chiari. And then, after an MRI at the Mayo Clinic, Heather received the news that her son, who was not even a year old, had Chiari. So they did the MRI and a couple other surgeries at the same time, and it was, I'll never forget the appointment that we found out it was Chiari. I was by myself, I didn't know I was gonna find out. We had had a sleep study, and it was December 22nd, 2011 and I went in to get the results for the sleep study and she started talking about this thing that could be wrong with his brain and she said and this is what he has Chiari malformation and I had no clue had never heard of it um, there was no pamphlets that they could hand out there was no information she just wrote it on the back of a business card and said we would be seeing a neurosurgeon within the next month Heather searched for answers online but found nothing she tried to find other people who had the same condition, but she couldn't. We saw the neurosurgeon then in January. He said he needed to have brain surgery to help correct, not correct it, but to take some of his symptoms away. There was a 50-50 chance that it would take any symptoms away. They don't know if it's going to work. They don't know why it works sometimes, and sometimes it doesn't. They just knew that Carter's was very restricted, that they needed to do something. Even with those odds, Carter had the surgery but nearly died in the process when he started bleeding heavily in the operating room. However, after hours of surgery, doctors said that the surgery was successful and that Carter was going to recover. Had we not done the surgery, nothing would have been fixed. He, you know, a lot of his symptoms are better. He wouldn't have been able to eat like he's eating right now um, because he couldn't swallow. Um, he couldn't talk. He still has a lot of problems with talking. Mommy. He, um, he's very delayed because of everything, you know, but he wouldn't have been able to do anything he can do now if we hadn't have had that surgery. Although Carter doesn't experience the severity of the symptoms he had before the surgery, he still experiences a lot of pain. Heather says that some days he seems like a perfectly happy, healthy boy, while other days 
he is riddled with pain. We can have days where he seems to just be in pain. His legs will give out. He'll be hitting his legs. He'll be holding the back of his head saying, owie, 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 and there's nothing I can do. The, you know, as far as adults that have it, they have said that nothing works for pain. You just have to kind of go through it, and that's the hardest thing to see your two-year-old child going through all this pain, and there's nothing you can do about it. Natividad says that she sometimes also feels helpless as she watches her sisters fight. It's tough. I am the oldest um, with brain issues myself as well, and our parents are both gone. So, and living far away, that doesn't help either. So it hurts my heart a lot to see her in so much pain every day and to know that her daughter may be next. While the entire process was difficult for Heather and her family, she says that one of the hardest parts for her was not being able to find other people who knew what she was going through and not being able to find people who understood their daily struggles. I think the hardest part was just not having any support. I, you know, I looked it up and I knew it was something wrong in his brain. I knew that there was, you know, a restriction of flow, um, but I didn't know how bad it was. I didn't know, you know, is he going to have to have surgery? Is this going to affect him for the rest of his life? What can we do afterwards? Can he go on roller coasters? Can he play hockey? Can he, you know, I didn't know. Nobody knew. And the biggest thing that, you know, I wanted was support. I wanted to talk to some other parent that their child had this and there was nothing that I could find. Until she met Natividad. Last summer, Natividad had just taken on the role of being the organizer for the Minnesota branch of the Conquer Chiari Walk Across America. Natividad took on that role at the request of her sister and saw how healing it was for people to be able to connect with others in similar circumstances give people the chance to connect with each other to let them know that they're not alone, especially with people that have children. That day of the walk, it was amazing. I did not know there were so many people with Chiari. We met other people who had the same surgeon my son Carter did, um, other people who were just going to be having surgery, adults that had it, so we could see and have that support that we never knew was there. And that has been the best thing that we could have. If not for last year's walk and connecting with others, Heather thinks that she would be having many more difficulties working through the care of her son. I think I, we would have just felt really alone still. I'd still have so many unanswered problems, you know. I wouldn't know where to turn. Um, that's why I hope from this and, and getting out there that people will realize that there is, there are parents, there's adults that have this that we can help you and be a support for them. For North Metro TV News, Danica Peterson, reporting. This year's Conquer Chiari Walk Across America will be held on September 21st, beginning at 8.30 a.m. at Commons Park in Fridley. They hope to raise local awareness of the disorder and raise funds to support the research being supported by Conquer Chiari. We have more information about this year's walk as well as information about online support groups for those dealing with Chiari on our website. NorthMetroTV.com